Hey guys, how's it going? It's Clarissa with that dumb movie show. Uh, so I'm doing a movie today which um, I think may be too late for a lot of people because I think this film's already been out in the US, obviously it's already been out in Japan and has been out in the UK for a little while and had a pretty limited run so there may not even be that many more screenings of it but hey, I really wanted to talk about Shin Godzilla because Godzilla is so freaking cool. So just for some context, Shin Godzilla is the first film uh, that Japan has produced, specifically the Toho Film Company, the first Godzilla film to be produced in Japan since 2004's Godzilla Wars. And it's definitely being considered as something of a reboot, but what I found the most interesting about this film is that it's not just a, a, a technical reboot of the franchise, but it's also a time to kind of reconsider what Godzilla actually means, like what Godzilla actually means to the culture. Do you know, I think it's all too easy just to associate Godzilla with kitsch, you know, it's the guy in the rubber suit going and crushing the little tiny cardboard cities, but I guess it's always important to just to consider the fact that the original Godzilla was made in 1954 by Toho, and you know, in 1954 in Japan, that is a country still living under the shadow of war, still living with the very recent memory of the atrocities in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and I think when you do rewatch that original Godzilla film, you know, you might be surprised by how dark it is in some aspects. Like, there are a lot of very lingering shots of the destruction, just completely decimated streets and buildings. You know, they always say that monsters are like the physical manifestations of fear, and Godzilla is absolutely the physical manifestation of the trauma of nuclear attack. And I think that's the spirit that's carried over into Shin Godzilla, but looking at it within a modern context, you know, taking into account Japan's more recent history and also just how we deal with disasters in a more general sense, because I guess you have to remember, you know, Japan, you know, in 2011, so quite recently suffered the absolutely, like, devastating Tohoku earthquake, the tsunami that was triggered because of it, and also the Fukushima disaster that happened as a result of the earthquake. And I think there's there's something kind of grounded about this film because it is, it's real locations and it's real neighborhoods and it's real people's homes and the film very dutifully labels every single location that Godzilla destroys on screen and I don't know, like, I find it very difficult to wrap my head around the idea that Japan is a country that has suffered not only the only two uses of nuclear weapons and warfare in all of history, but also the second biggest nuclear accident other than Chernobyl. Like, that's, that's a lot. And I think that is maybe why this film does feel so different to any of its American counterparts. So if you take Gareth Edwards' Godzilla from 2014, for example, like that is all very apocalyptic. It's all, you know, all this huge, giant, rumbling skies and lightning and the world is ending. But with Shin Godzilla, it's all very much about kind of the reality of how you would deal with that situation. And yeah, sure, you've got the traditional crowds running and screaming their faces off, but you also see you know, like, people attached to their smartphones, they're either trying to film stuff so they can get, like, ooh, scoop news footage, or they're trying to, like, follow the news while they're on the train. You know, that's not to say that Godzilla isn't the main attraction of this movie, because what I also really like about this film is that they did find a little bit of innovation in that creature, even though he's been done, like, so many different times. For example, when he first comes out of the ocean, he's, like, this giant, unblinking, no jointed thing that just kind of shimmies along and like smashes himself into buildings and it looks kind of ridiculous but it's also really fun he kind of looks like one of those worm toys you know he had with the invisible string but and then he evolves and he grows bigger and he becomes more like normal Godzilla but he's still very cool but the film's real focus here is bureaucracy. Like, there are a lot of scenes of governmental meetings in this film, which I know sounds really boring, but it's actually interesting to see the entire line of command from the Prime Minister giving the order to attack all the way down to the individual soldier firing the first missile. And, you know, with disaster response, we have this entire culture of, you know, set plans of action. But what Shin Godzilla does 
is it exploits that fear of, you know, what happens if there is something that's entirely unprecedented for which there is no plan of action, which, you know, when you start talking about a nuclear future or nuclear warfare, a lot of the fear surrounding that is the fact that we don't quite know what we would do. We don't quite know what the response is, and I think that's what is driving a lot of the hysteria as well in the news at the moment. And yeah, this film does just a really good job of exploiting that. So Godzilla's attack is in two waves, which is interesting because it's kind of like an aftershock. And after the first wave, there is this character called Yaguchi, who is the deputy chief cabinet secretary, and he is overlooking all the destruction. And everyone else is going, wow, wow, I can't believe that Godzilla managed to you know, destroy so much in this mere two hour rampage. And his reaction is to go, we had two hours to mount a response and this is all we could do. This is disappointing. And that's very interesting because it reflects, you know, after Fukushima, there was a lot of criticism towards the government that they hadn't responded effectively enough and they hadn't responded quickly enough. So yeah, Shin Godzilla definitely has an element of political satire to it and it's pretty funny in moments. Like they hold this really big press conference to be like, look, Godzilla, he's staying in the ocean. Don't worry, he's not going to come to land. And then literally a smash cuts to Godzilla coming to land and then everybody's panicking because they can't figure out which agency it falls under. Is it the ocean agency? Is it the earth agency? We don't know. And also it posts fun quite a lot at international relations, especially the US who initially swoops in as like, the angelic ally will help you. But of course it turns out that they have ulterior motives. No surprise. Yeah, I really enjoyed Shin Godzilla. I think it's definitely far from a perfect film. For example, they really overcomplicate Godzilla's biology and there's just way too many scenes of scientists trying to explain things while pointing at diagrams and maps and it's all a little unnecessary. And I would say I probably prefer the Gareth Edwards Godzilla just because I I mean, I love him as a director and I think he did such a fantastic job at making such a, like an epic, atmospheric movie. But I think what Shin Godzilla definitely proves is that as a monster, like Godzilla kind of belongs in Japan in a way. He doesn't belong there. Like he makes the most sense when he's Japan. You really understand who Godzilla is and what he means, you know, when He's destroying Tokyo. But if you've had a chance to see Shin Godzilla, I would love to know what you guys thought. You can let me know down in the comments below or you can hit me up on Twitter details down in that description box. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can hang out and talk about movies. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.